Exatamente. Fresh Art International presents Art Talk, conversations about creativity in the 21st century. I'm Kathy Bird, Fresh Art producer, and today I'm in Chicago speaking with Chicago-based performance video artist Jefferson Pender. Jefferson is about to begin a new live performance series called Escape Artist. Uh, we were just talking, trying to determine what category to put your art in. Performance art, performance video, video. Where do you see yourself? You know, I kind of plant myself, you know, somewhere in the fringe because I don't see myself as, as one of these, uh, you know, tech, technical people, technology-based people. I, I, I'm much more into the hum humanity of the projects. And um, as far as performance goes, um, I, I, I don't... I, th I like to, to be able to preserve the moment, and I like to be able to spread the moment in different locations at the same time. So I like this idea of being uh, both a performance and a video artist. Um, you know, in some ways it represents a certain integration with, with my practice, and, and I, I enjoy, um, you know, being able to, to, to mix and, and pick and choose and, and, and do whatever I desire in, in any given moment. Well, as I understand you began your creative practice in theater and so theater must have must play a, a big role in how you've become a performance artist tell us about that yeah um, you know it's funny because I thought I was going to be you know a, a classically trained stage actor that's the direction that I was I was really committed to um, and then I went to grad school in theater and, and I started doing experimental plays in what they called like the the theater x series which which i always had issue with but that was that's the the title of it it was like called the theater x series and they would do like more avant-garde black revolutionary theater like a marie baraka um dutchman and i thought well this this is interesting um because the more theater that i um invested in the more i realized i wanted to do what i wanted to do i i, I didn't like going to auditions and, and sitting in front of people and, and doing a, a, a routine on, on what how I could prove my worthiness to someone else's production. So I didn't want to wait for that. So I think it became about um, getting out and, and, and trying to make my own work. What is the importance of the exertion in your work? Well, um, I've, I had a great uh, teacher in, in undergrad uh, when, when I was a student at the University of Maryland, and he was really a practitioner of physical theater, that um, almost in a, a Meyerhold uh, biomechanic style, that if you wanted to uh, display or, or uh, an emotion, you or if if there was like an emotional uh, response to an action, you actually um, it, it could be a lot more powerful to to, to do something physical than to, to, to think psychologically about you know like in a Stanislavski approach if someone uh, you know died on stage and you had to react to it well you think about somebody who died uh, and that you were close to so you would do um, a little bit of recall but in a Meyerhold or biomechanics style uh, it was all about physical uh, exertion. Maybe you would go around the block 14 times and then perform that piece. And, and then that, that exhaustion, that physical exhaustion is going to lead to um, an emotional response. So so that, to me, that was what was um, really exciting about my, my training, um, my theater training, and which carried over to the performance art work, is that um, that doing these, these physical tasks, and in particular doing these physical tasks you know, uh, carrying w with you everything that, that represents your identity, you're, you're, you're making associations. So um, in my work, in the inertia cycle, it was all about like, you know, um, my body in the inner city environment doing uh, a, a, a laborious, um, a laborious task that was um, obvious and a Herculean task, if you will, um, something like carrying a telephone pole, pulling a pole, uh, pushing a car it could all be you know symbols of of, of power and, and struggle um, and, and and also futility so mule you were dragging you actually had a harness on yourself you were mm -hmm. dragging a 300 pound log log yeah. through mm -hmm. the streets of the city Baltimore it, Baltimore it, yeah and uh, part of it was that that was um, ceiling tin and wall tin from from homes that had been gutted 
So it was like I'm pulling the weight of, of, of the past, uh, history. Um, the whole, um, the pole was also, I, I always thought the pole was beautiful. I mean, it, it kind of had these, um, this wonderful texture and this history to it and I strapped it on me and, and just uh, try to see what would it be like to, to, to move a heavy weight, almost like these muscle men competition where you see these people strapping on, you know, this harness and trying to, to pull a bus or, or a plane, you know, I'm, I'm pulling something that's, that's specific and, and maybe representative of, of an experience. Right, and I noticed in the three videos of the Inertia series, mm -hmm. you're wearing this gray suit. I mean, you're, you're a mule, as you describe it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first piece, you're pulling this 300-pound weight, wearing a suit. And in Marathon, you are actually getting dressed somehow as you run. Right. Talk about that. That's a pretty, <laughs> a pretty uh, entertaining, high-energy piece that I... How do you describe that? Well, yeah, with with marathon, uh, it kind of started out as, as a vision, you know, like like just like you get these ideas and you start drifting into the night. Um, I, I had this idea of like this this run, that this continuous run, and you know, um, and I thought about the uniform, you know, what I would wear so people would know that 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 I meant I was I was serious, and so I, th I thought, well, I want to wear like professional clothing, you know, I want to wear something. Um, that, that represents, you know, the, the working man um, to, to some regard. And so what happened is um, in Marathon, I start out with with no clothes. I mean, there's no close-up shots, so you can't see the details, but it was all about, like, armament, like like finding this suit, finding this this power, you know, along the route, and then in, in arriving at the location and, and almost like, um, you, know, uh, you know, John Henry, this... Steel driving man, you know, who who you know, spent all this labor to to lay down these, uh, you know, these these spikes in the rail track, and then collapses right, you know, when when he arrives or he wins the the race. Marathon is is all about this, you know, this this continuous run and finally reaching this destination and, and collapsing. Um, with Mule, it, it was more about like a, almost like a sketch of 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 moving with this weight, mm -hmm. um, and and for Lazarus. Um, that the suit was actually a suit of um, my mentor, uh, David Driscoll. Actually, his father um, originally owned the suit and gave it to him, and he gave it to me. You said he was a minister. Yeah, he was. Um, he was a minister in, in in North Carolina, very close to Asheville, and and that's pretty. It was pretty exciting for me to have all of these clothes again with this history and with this relationship to to the past. Um, and to, and to embody this for, for, the, for the pieces that, that are about um, like a connection to, I mean, to this, uh, you know, to these old memories. And with, with Mule, you seem to be on your own, pulling mm -hmm. your weight. And then with Marathon, there were various people that helped you get dressed, basically. Mm -hmm. Were holding up a tie or helping you right. uh, along the way. But in Lazarus, you really have this sense of of an incredible community because in that piece you start off trying to start an old Volvo, right? Right. Right. Um, with, with, with Lazarus, I wanted to step away from, from himself. I wanted to have a presence there, um, but I wanted the piece to really be about the contribution of others to, in, in the project as well as uh, metaphorically um, in, in progress. Um, but it's also it's delusionistic. It's not like it's it's literal. It's much as literal as it seems, or as strong of a narrative as it seems. It's really a, a strong metaphor or visual trope of what it means to have um, the community behind you, and then when it's you know at, at the very end when it, it's it's not there. It's uh, you know it's kind of like an illusion. If you can picture this piece, uh, he's starting to push the car by himself. So by the crescendo of the piece, I would say that. The, the strongest moment of power you sense with the people helping you, there were about 15 or 20 people That's pushing right. you. That's right. And, you know, it's, for me, it, you know, it, the irony of, of having all of these people move something that, that's supposed to move you um, became um, really what, what the piece um, was about. And actually, um, you know, it, it, that's something that I, I feel people are always more than willing to, to help each other do is, is to move a vehicle 
uh, you know, when it breaks down in the street, because I think everybody knows what it feels like to be stranded in that way. Right, but it's also a temporal, it's not requiring you to have a long-term commitment that's to that person. Exactly. And it, I think that's what Lazarus sort of communicates. They're all helping him, and then they drop off one by one till he's alone and rolling to a stop again. Right, or, you know, he's alone and, and it never really happened. That's true, too. Yeah. He's back, and it looks like he's where he started. Exactly so, where he started. So that illusion of help or illusion of sense of, of a community, are we really supported by others? Is that the question? Right. It, you know, and, and I think that it's questioning. Um, it's the only piece I have where it's really questioning this idea of community. Um, where I've mentioned before, a lot of the other pieces are, are purely about um a personal struggle, is, but a, a metaphor for a larger one. This one is is is, a, is almost like the opposite. It goes the other other way. So that idea of illusion versus reality that has a lot to do with your next series, mm -hmm. the live performance series called Escape Artist. How did that come into your head to start doing a Houdini sort of performance? Yeah, I, I've always been fascinated with these old vintage photographs. I used to think that that back in, in the old days, everything was in black and white, you know, because the perception was that, you know, that, that that's history, that's time, that's something that's in the past. So um, I really started looking at uh, these old Houdini photos and, and marveling at his showmanship in, in the theater. Um, the, this, this, the, uh, we call it the, the mob theater, street theater that, that would happen when he would produce one of the, his inversion pieces that would happen um, uh, literally in the, in the middle of the street he would have these, these policemen strap him into a straitjacket and, and, and string him up. And, you know, and then I started thinking about um, you know, lynch photographs which seemed to be you know, a, a different but similar kind of entertainment where uh, an individual was, was, was strung up um, against their will. Um, except you know, with with Houdini, he could he could free himself, and um, you know, and, and the, the lynching victims you know fell prey to the mob um, hysteria and violence. So I, I began to think about you know what it would be like to combine these 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 two ideas together, um, the the lynching history with this history of a certain showmanship, and and actually I, th I think that that people in this period of time were really fascinated with with this idea of suspending somebody with a rope. I mean I. I, I you know, when I see these photos and I see the crowds that, that Houdini is, is uh, attracting, these, they're very similar to the, the crowds that would come and, and um, uh, would gather for, for a lynching. Right. I mean, similar, well, in, in the way that it's, it's a huddled mass of people who, that, that are titillated by, by watching, you know, the spectacle of someone um, hanging. Right. Yeah. Well, the idea that you are going to need to, in this great city of Chicago or wherever you're going to perform, you may become an itinerant mm -hmm. uh, escape artist. But to begin, how are you building that sense of spectacle for your performance? Well, it's still in process, but what I'm hoping for is, is uh, to, have, to have music, um, to have like a, you know, the spoken word incorporated, you know, so, so people know why they're there. Um, they know why they're there because uh, there, there's going to be a spectacle. Something's going to happen. The music's coming into it. You have like an individual who's going to defy some kind of odd, and um, hopefully going to entertain and going to be a, a part of uh, an illusion that 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 hopefully um, you know will fulfill their expectation of, of you know I guess this kind of, of ritual, um, but. I think my hope and my desire is that it, it won't be so easy, you know, right. it won't be so easy for people to, to get this, this uh, entertainment and they're going to have to watch. And, and you know, um, I, I, in Key West years ago, when I, actually when I was in grad school, I saw um, uh, an escape artist getting out of a straitjacket and um, the contortions of his face and the colors he would change and, and how, how hard actual task was um, made me think that... Um, there might be something in um, the struggle more than actually the escape. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing this performance and talking to you about how, how it turns out. Oh, great. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Jefferson.
You've been listening to Art Talk with Jefferson Pender. Read more about Jefferson and hear other podcasts in this series at freshartinternational.com.